How's it going everyone? Toogie here, back again with another NHL 16 tutorial. And in this video, we cover one of my favorite tools to use. It's the saucer pass. Now what you're primarily going to see in this video is how I tend to utilize the manual saucer pass. And of course, keeping it simple for those who don't know, if you don't know this, I'd be shocked, but simply put right bumper on your Xbox and R1 on the PlayStation. And simply put, there are a lot of different ways to use the saucer pass. Obviously you can use it as a you know normal pass to get off a one timer, whether automatic or manual. But for me, the best way to utilize the saucer pass is on breakouts and long stretch passes. We'll go over when this works, when this doesn't work, and we'll even touch upon when to use it in terms of cycling. Although we won't stay on that topic for too long because I will be covering more cycling options in the future. But to me, the main reason to use the manual saucer pass is again, it takes away all the randomness you'll get with the normal right trigger or R2 passing. We all know it can be a little bit inconsistent. So to be able to put the power on the pass, to be able to aim the pass, it's all up to you and takes away the game's random garbage. And as we get into these clips, of course, in true back to the basics fashion, I'll break them down individually. This first clip isn't exactly the most outrageous example. It is a pretty simple play. But again, you never know when the person in between the two, you know, in between the puck carrier and in between the guy he's passing to, you never know if that one defender is going to get a very random interception animation. I think we've all seen it before where players bat down pucks out of the most ridiculous spots. But in this first example, it works out perfectly. Of course, there's only one way to go. And again, it's all about communication, getting to the boards to make the pass that much more simple. Of course, we're not completely on the boards, but I'm going over that way. We get a nice, smooth pickup animation and get an offensive chance. Play number two, and it starts off with a nice example of biding your time and creating space for yourself. That is something we will talk about in a future tutorial because it is an extremely valuable tool to use. But again, this play is another prime example of having proper communication with your team. In this case, me being the defenseman and my forwards knowing where I expect them to be. And again, it can be predictable, but utilizing the boards is the perfect way to go. And my left wing plays it perfectly as he very well should. I will point out a couple other options here as we get ready for the breakdown. But again, one more time, we circle back around. Luckily, no contact, we hold on to the puck. Not the best example of it, but again, we create the space. We see our left wing up on the break, on the left boards, right where he should be. And again, we hit the saucer pass right up the boards. Their man in the middle, nowhere near to be able to make the proper interception. The pass goes through off the bank and we get another offensive chance. And as far as the other options go, of course, you can see red he is right where he needs to be, drifting towards that center lane. Blue, it's a little bit too far away. An early stretch pass from this angle could hit either of them, but green is the main target. He's right on the boards where he should be, and we complete the play. Of course, as a defenseman, if you're confident enough or skilled enough, or really don't even have to be skilled, let's be honest, anybody does it, you can jump into the rush, or if you properly time a dump and chase with your teammates, it can be very dangerous as well. Play number three, and again, not only is it a good example of great teamwork and knowing where your teammates are going to be and proper position, but it's an example of just how effective the saucer pass can be. You'll see here on this turnover, we get a nice little break where the computer actually picks it up clean, somehow gets a quick pass to me. And as we get ready to freeze this play up here, again, you'll see exactly what I mean as far as having different options. Look at all of these options. Realistically, you can hit any three players. I could easily just do a normal pass to green. That's a little bit too close for a traditional saucer pass. We could hit red up the middle, and even blue is a decent option over on the right board, although that computer could potentially pick it off. We see that the man is drifting towards green, looking to pick him off, so we hit red, and we get a nice, decent scoring opportunity down in their zone. Play number four, and we'll continue the trend of showing the play and then breaking it down. We get a decent defensive face-off win, hit him on the saucer pass, and give our guy a chance on the breakout. Now again here, off the face-off, we get a nice pickup. We see the pressure coming. We turn around, cut inside to the middle, and that opens up our options, which you will see on the screen right about now. Now it's pretty evident. 
two ways to go. Well, technically three, or really even four. You could, of course, carry the puck if you want. I could hit the computer defender behind me, which is always a terrible idea. And then we have our two wingers. Now, it's a little bit of a dangerous play, and I'm not going to say for sure that a normal pass wouldn't work, that a normal right trigger or right bumper pass wouldn't work, but it's less likely. You elevate the puck, and that allows you to get the puck past the defenseman. And in this situation, either defenseman, whether the human or the computer in front of me, will more than likely, I'm willing to bet, would more than likely pick off a normal pass. So we use the saucer pass, going to blue, since he's on our forehand and it's more likely to get to him. It works, and again, he gets a decent chance to make a play. Now these next plays are all similar, so we're gonna do this very quickly, but you'll see here on this play, we get a nice sauce pass to our left wing, who again, knew right where to be. Now when we break this one down, obviously we miss, and here's the key, the communication between myself as lefty and my left wing. Notice that he stops and goes over to the boards, making himself an immediate option. I pick up the puck, and again, here's where the saucer pass is different. We all know how glitched out passing along the boards can be this year. You just try to pass it up the boards, your guy throws it into the sideboards, it gets lost in his feet, you lose possession. Use the manual sauce pass to control essentially the play. But again, it's good communication, the left wing gets over there and we complete the play. Now this next play really shows off why I love the saucer pass so much, and it's the unpredictability. And you'll see here, my left wing is well out of the play, but he sees me on the sideboards and he knows right where to go. Watch him as he goes to the boards. I'm in double coverage. I managed to hold onto the puck, wait for him to get into position. And then right here, yes, I have a ton of options. If you have a right defenseman, if you're playing fives or sixes, you could easily send the puck back around the boards but when you have someone right on your back, like right now, I have someone right on my back, there's a good chance he could poke the puck off of me if I don't send it in time. Or I could even look for a saucer pass to blue or red. But as you can see by the second defenseman behind the one closest to me, he's already guessing that's where I'm going to go. He's guessing that's where I'm going to send it. And this play I rarely see anybody else do just in general. I've played a couple hundred games of NHL 16, hundreds of games in the past. This is my perhaps favorite tool to use on defense, and it's this reverse saucer pass up the boards. 99 times out of 100, it's accurate. And of course, my left wing knew right where to go. We complete the play and again, get another offensive chance. Next play, and again, simple stuff. We make the defensive play, steal the puck, and red this time. Again, it's about knowing how each other play, playing as a team, Watch red as he fills in for green, pinches over to those boards, knows exactly what I'm gonna look for, and he is the recipient of the saucer pass, and we get an offensive chance. And these next three plays, guys, at this point, you should know exactly what's going to happen in terms of where my teammates are going to be, where I expect them to be, and again, as you see on that second play, a little bit of luck. It's all about teamwork. It's all about the unexpected keeping your opponents on their toes. And again, as I mentioned really quickly, we'll talk about the dump and chase and cycling. And here in terms of cycling, this is probably, again, a great tool for every defenseman to have. Not to say it works every time, but right here, as I get the puck on the draw, I have very, very few options. And every defenseman gets stuck with plays like this every single time game. Now simply put, if I try to pass to that right D, he's going to lose the puck, human or computer. If it's a human, you might be able to get the one-timer off or might be able to make a move, but it's going to be really close. The center's covered. The right wing, again, you might be able to make a move, but they might be able to cover him very quickly. So what I do is I use the saucer pass. Again, you'll see on this play, it cuts it close and it's not perfect. Sometimes it does get broken up, but again, my left wing knows right where to go. I send the puck on a saucer pass down the boards. He gets it, and we get another offensive chance. And now we have our last play, and again, I talked about earlier having the opportunity to take the puck as the defenseman, and you'll see here again, it's another example of teamwork allowing your team to have at least a chance on the dump and chase rather than just sending it in and having nothing happen, and we end up getting a decent scoring chance. And you'll see this as we slow down. I miss the opportunity to hit blue. He's covered. Red's pretty well covered. We can't really organize a dump and chase because I'm not going to hit the red line in time. So we decide through communication, carry it in. Obviously, they close me down pretty damn quick. 
So my option here is to do the dump and chase. Now, obviously, if you try to shoot it, it can be very, very inconsistent. And using the right bumper to do an actual dump can also be very inconsistent. So what do we do? We use the saucer pass. My left wing, you can see his arrow towards the bottom left side of the screen. He knows that it's coming. It's a play we do every single game, especially when I'm on defense. You carry in, you sauce pass it around the boards, and it opens up a chance for the grind it out, you know, to grind it out and get a nice playoff, which we eventually do. But guys, that is it for this episode. I do thank you all very much for watching. Obviously, it's been a long time coming after the offensive and defensive positioning tutorials, but those did uh, amazingly well. I never would have expected having put those up, you know, two months into the whole YouTube thing for those to do as relatively well as they have. And again, it's going to take me a little bit of time now that, you know, we're working with a lot of in-game footage and very specific details, you know, with stuff like saucer passes and some other stuff I have planned down the line, dump and chase specifically, biding time. But a lot of it can come down to properly using the saucer pass, which is why I felt like this was an important tutorial to make. But again, that'll do it for this one, guys. I thank you so much for watching. Leave a like down below, of course. If you've enjoyed, subscribe for more. Along with this, of course, Bruins GM modes and stuff like that going on. Looking to evolve the channel here in 2016. And if you would, please spread the word. Very small channel here. Just trying to get my name out there. And for like the 16th time, I will thank you so much for watching. And I will see you all next time.